Uh, now, some politicians will say pretty much anything to their supporters, as we've been discussing here this morning. Some of it may be true, some of it may not be so true. Yeah, it could hardly be more timely, could it, this? Mm. Uh, it's difficult sometimes to cut through the noise and get to the truth, as writer Eaton Smallman explains in today's The Point. Politicians deceive us. MPs never lie, they misspeak. Governments don't kill, they cause friendly fire or collateral damage. What they certainly do, maybe more than ever, is use euphemism and doublespeak designed to leave us credulous and bewildered. No printing money, just quantitative easing. No spending cuts, just efficiency savings. Never a problem, only an issue. A parliamentary committee found that a recent NHS scandal was a result of a culture of denial, where a complaint couldn't be a complaint, it had to be a review or feedback. Affordable, according to the dictionary at least, means inexpensive and reasonably priced. So why do we let those in charge use the term with a straight face to describe a half a million pound home without us all screaming blue murder from our unaffordable rooftops? We don't let politicians off the hook with figures. We have an Office for Budget responsibility for that. So let's bring them to book on their words too. Why not an Office for Language responsibility? A kind of dictionary corner for Westminster. Political language, after all, is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable. So said George Orwell in 1946, exactly 70 years ago. Isn't it about time we called political euphemisms out for what they are? Prettified lies, plain and simple. Yeah, it couldn't come at a better time, could it, uh, with the election uh, so tantalisingly close now. And there's been so much rhetoric, hasn't there, in, in this election campaign. And we've seen Clinton saying, uh, making claims. We've seen Trump mm. making claims on the stage in those debates, only for fact-checkers to tell us later that mm. they weren't necessarily yeah. as black and white as they made out. Mm. Um, and that's a real problem for, for the electorate, isn't it? Because they don't know what's true some of the time. Yes, I think the electorate now are looking to see who is the statesman. And actually, when you say it, we've just been trying it out here. President Clinton, well, we've, we've had that before, so it's not a novelty. President Trump, oh, now <laughs> that kind of takes mm. you back a little bit, doesn't it? And I think that's a silly little thing that the electorate will be playing with this week. Um, as you say, it's less than a week. They'll be trying it out. And one of the papers today has the first piece that I've read, actually. What will it be like under Trump? And what would it, what would the country be like under Trump? What would change? We may well planning. find out next week. Yeah. They haven't planned for it. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Think about this. Every time we try and get it onto issues, you can't mm. because it just ends up being a personality clash. I think mm. we'll all be glad when this is over. OK, Isabel, weather time. Let's take a look.